Welcome to Sunday Night Live. I'm Harold Herring, and that's my fine wife, Beth. Hallelujah. Would you like to be known as a successful person or just somebody who gets by? Would you like to meet and socialize with important people? And by the way, there's a difference between important people and successful people. There's a difference between them. Now, if, if it seems impossible for you to be able to interact with people on that level, well, the Word of God has something to say about it. Amen. It's found in Proverbs 22, verse 29. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mere men. The key to meeting, working, and socializing with important people is to be diligent in your business. It's important to understand that diligence, diligent in your business, doesn't mean that you necessarily own your own business. Right. The word diligent in Hebrew is H4106, H4106, and it means quick, prompt, skilled, ready. The Message Bible translation of Proverbs 22 verse 9 says, observe people who are good at their work. Skilled workers are always in demand and admired. They don't take a back seat to anyone. But yes, Brother Harold, if that's hard because you don't know the kind of people I work with. Well, that may be true. I don't, but God. Amen. But God does. God does. Ephesians 6, verse 7. With good will doing service as to the Lord, not to men. God anticipated that we might run into problems in the workplace That's right and he gave us the answer he gave us the answer to it so our, this is something that every believer needs to get a fresh revelation of yes because it can change a person's attitude and their work ethic That's right when we understand the principle of performing our assigned responsibilities as unto the Lord and not to men mm. you know we immediately add an extra dimension of personal success an advancement to whatever vocation we may be involved That's in. That's exactly right. Because you're able to change your total and entire attitude if you're thinking that everything you do is really to please him, him, and not the person that's over you. When you get the revelation that you're not working for American Airlines or uh, Walmart or... Or any specific supervisor or boss. That's exactly right. That, that it gives you a whole different mindset that's right. of being the Lord's employee. Amen. And, and that's the key. But you must be a worker. Yes. You must be a worker because a lazy person is not capable of success. Proverbs twelve twenty four in the Living Bible. Work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and never succeed. Laziness is a dream robber, That's right. a destiny stealer, and often, oftentimes, honey, a heartbreaker. That's the truth. That's exactly what it is. Wow, and I have, mm. Proverbs 12, 24 in the New Living Translation says, work hard and, now I just think I either. It's, you read living, this the, is new This living. is the new living, yeah. okay, very similar. Work hard and become a leader, be lazy and become a slave, truly. That's what I call an either-or scripture. Yes, that's right. You can either do this, you can work hard and be a leader, or, or if you don't work hard, you won't be a leader, and in fact, you might be a slave. Yeah, become and, a slave. And um, by slave, I mean under the dominant influence of someone else, that's because right. that's how the dictionary defines being a slave, under the dominant influence of someone else. If you need another reason to be a leader instead of a lazy follower, hmm. you make more money. That's right. <laughs> That's you make right. more money as a leader. Now, <clears throat> with all that as a kind of an appetizer, let's get to the primary scripture for this teaching. That's right. Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. This is in the King James. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. 
and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that beareth for, bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. As much Hallelujah. as God wants to prosper us, That's right. he can only prosper what we do. Last part of that verse says, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He, will, he cannot and will not prosper what we don't do. He, he just he won't do that. That's right. He cannot prosper our inactivity. God can't prosper what we think about mm -hmm. doing. He can't prosper what we talk about doing. God prospers what we do, what we do. And no matter how many times you go to church, teach a Sunday school class, or, or anything else, um, you know, you got to be a doer. You got to be a doer. A doer of the word. If you're idle, God's not going to prosper you. Not what? at all. That's right. There's nothing to prosper, you might say. Mm -hmm. um, the last phrase in Psalm 1, verse 3 makes God's reaction to us most clear. It says, whatsoever he does. Now we read that. This is the third time it's been said tonight. Whatever he does. Now, baby, that means work. Yeah. He will not prosper wishful thinking. That's right. He will not prosper daydreaming. He cannot and will not bless it. Mm -hmm. he, he just won't. He'll only bless what we do, our work. Uh, and our work is our seed. That's our part in fulfilling the scripture. So that if we do this, we'll get that. That's exactly and right. And that's the whole point of it. That's exactly right. The last uh, sentence in Psalm 1-3 in the contemporary English version says, those people succeed in everything they do. Anything of value mm -hmm. doesn't come cheap. Every prize has a price. Yeah. Let me say that again. Every prize has a price. And success, hard work is paid in advance of success. That's right. It's paid in advance of it. You have to do it beforehand. But if we don't work, God doesn't have anything to bless. That's right. He doesn't have anything to bless. Second Timothy 2 verse 15 in the Message Bible says, Concentrate on doing your best for God. Work you won't be ashamed of. Laying out the truth plain and simple. Stay clear of pious talk that is only talk. Words are not mere words, you know. If, they, if they're not backed by a godly life, they accumulate as poison in the soul. Wow. When we study hard, and what God's called us to do. Yes. We'll not be ashamed, but acclaimed. It's good. When we, when we do what he tells us to do and we work at it, we'll be acclaimed and we won't have to be ashamed. That's right. And that's the key. There are seven key thoughts. Earlier you read Psalm 1, 1, 2, 3 in the King James Bible, but now we're going to read it in the classic Amplified. Mm. And there are seven keys in this that we're going to teach about tonight. That's right. Class, I love the classic Amplified. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers, the ridiculers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, his precepts and teachings, he habitually meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree firmly planted and fed by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season. Its leaf does not wither, and in, whatsoever he, in whatever he does, he prospers and comes to maturity. In these three verses, we could actually have a number of points. Oh, yeah. Uh, more than seven, but we're going to do seven. Number one, walking in the wisdom of the word. Mm. Walking in the wisdom of the word. Psalm 119, verse 32 in the Contemporary English Version says, I am eager to learn all that you want me to do. Help me to understand more and more. We must have an insatiable appetite yeah. for the word of God. And the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God. 
And it says in Luke 2.52, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Now, according to Strong's Concordance, mm -hmm. the Greek word for wisdom is a favorite word of ours. Is a favorite word of ours. Sophia is the Greek word for wisdom. Amen. And it just so happens. I know. That's the name of the cutest little grand sugar in all the world. <laughs> and she's ours. And she's ours. That's it. She's wise. But it means. But it actually means in Strong's Concordance. Wisdom, broad and full of intelligence, mm -hmm. the wisdom which belongs to men, the varied knowledge of things, human and divine, acquired by acuteness and experience, and summed up in maxim, maxims and proverbs, the knowledge and pra practice of the re requisites for godly and upright living. And that same Greek word is also found in Luke 21, 15. Mm -hmm. And we're going to read it to you in the classic Amplified. And it says, For I myself will give you a mouth and such utterance and wisdom that all of your foes combined will be unable to stand against or refute. Now, I like that. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah and amen. Mm. It's also used in 1 Corinthians 1.24. This also in the classic Amplified. But to those who are called, whether Jew or Greek, Gentile, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of Come God. On. Hallelujah. So how do we get, you know, how do you and I get wisdom? James 1 verse 5 spells it out. If any of you, meaning any of us, lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. You know, this is being the King James Version. Upbraideth not means he, if you break that down or look that up, it means that he doesn't mind you asking. He's not going to put you down for asking. He's not going to, you know, be uh, patronizing because you happen to ask for wisdom. He is going to give you the wisdom you need. And how often I have prayed that for wisdom in a situation. Mm. And as we renew our minds with the wisdom of God. That's right. Amazing things begin, begin to, to happen. First Corinthians 16 verse 23 in the Amplified Bible. The grace, favor, and spiritual blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's Amen. what I want. That's it. The grace, favor, That's right. and blessing. Mm. That's just awesome. It is awesome. Hallelujah. All right. Number uh, two. Number two. Avoiding negative and sinful people. Think about that. Yeah. Now, the couple things you need to think about. First off, you need to without question or hesitation or reservation. Remove yourself from associating with ignorant, negative people who are satisfied with where they are in life and don't care to find a direction, God's direction or purpose. Mm -hmm. Second, put yourself in, <clears throat> in the company of people who have a hunger or thirst and a passion for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 4 verse 8 in the New Living Translation says, If you prize wisdom, she will make you great. Embrace her and she will honor you. As we honor the Word of God, we are honored by God Amen. for honoring His Word. And so the question is, are we around people who reverence God, who follow His instructions, That's right. do what the Word says? Do we associate with people who think, the glass or the bottle is half empty or half full. Are our friends pessimistic or optimistic about the future? Mm -hmm. And right now there's a lot of pessimistic people because of the election. But I can tell you this, I have every confidence that regardless of who's elected you know, in this presidential election, by the time I wake up Wednesday morning and look out, I'm not going to see God's throne. He'll still be on it. And no matter who's president, it's going to be all right. I have personal choices, not going there. But the point is, God has got everything under control. And we need to continue praying. And he's praying. not surprised. That's right. Prayer is the answer on That's that one. It. Proverbs 13, verse 20 in the Message Bible says, Become wise by walking with the wise. Hang out with fools and watch your life fall to pieces. You need to make a determined effort to get around people who can encourage you, exhort you, yes. edify, build you up, lift you up. 
and speak the pure of the power from the positive into your life. Mm. Because you'll be better. Well, Brother Harold, I'm, don't, I'm not around anybody like that. Well, make it your business to get around people like that. And, uh, and if you're within driving distance, you're not come see us. Hey, we're like that. <laughs> or listen to our programs. You get lifted up. That's right. Every day, Rich Thoughts, rich for, thoughts breakfast. for Breakfast. Damn. So, you know, put yourself in an environment. Yes. Because you need to recognize that. And let me just say this. I'm not telling you to abandon your, your friends. Or your family. Or your family. Sometimes your family, really. But I am telling you that like produces like. Amen. And, and your attitude, speech, and behavior mm -hmm. are directly affected yes. by your friends. And if you're committed to elevating your life to a whole different level, you need to have, hang around some folks that got it together. That's right. Don't hang around the homeboys who will leave you hanging out to dry. You know, you need to get around people that can uh, speak words of encouragement to you. Right. That are put together financially, personally, and most of all, spiritually. Spiritually. That's true. Here's, uh, let's see, number, number three. three. Hanging out with the right folks. I yes. told you we'd get to it in a moment. Here it is. See, it's not enough to avoid negative, sinful people. We must hang around with the right kind of people. Mm -hmm. People have a dream, a goal, a vision. Um, so here are seven questions to ask yourself, and I put them down for you, so you got them. First, what biblically successful qualities do you want to manifest in your life? Be specific. See, first is about you. What spiritual qualities do you want to manifest in your life? Mm -hmm. Be specific. Second, name the seven people that you currently spend the most time with. Now, don't get hung up if you can't name seven, whether it's four or five but just name the people that you spend most of your time with. Third, list the positive and negative character qualities of each of these people. What are the top three positive or negative qualities of each person? And be honest about it. Be honest about it. Um, fourth, which of the people you name match the spiritual qualities that you want to manifest in your life? Amen. Uh, find the consistency in their character and in their uh, motivation. And, and, and don't include somebody who's occasionally positive. We're talking about consistency, day in and day out. Because if you need an encouraging word, you don't want to catch them on one of their bad days. Well, and the more positive you get, the more those things just matter to you. Because you just don't want to be around people who are totally and always, you know, bringing up negatives or anyway. Mm. Fifth, so. list seven people who may not be in your inner circle at the moment, but they possess the character and emotion, motivational qualities you desire. Yeah. And once again, if it's only four or five, just go with it. Sixth, how can you increase contact with the new people you want to be part of your inner circle? You can reach out to them through direct contact. That's face-to-face -face email, social media, telephone, Telegraph, snail mail, smoke signals, or, you know. I think it's interesting, you know, as we get into this about Napoleon Hill. Um, because you can gain access through who, you know, through uh, other ways. If you don't have people around you that are all that positive. Napoleon Hill wrote Think and Grow Rich way back in the day. And I mean way back in the day. But every night before he slept, he would have an imaginary council meeting with his invisible counselors. And this counselor, this council meeting, I think this is amazing and interesting. I mean, you've got to think about this. He was a pioneer of what I would say the success strategies of life. I'm trying to even think of some of those other guys. They were back in the, what, 40s and 50s. They were yeah, starting Charles, to come up. Charles Schwartz. Well, yeah, and, um, boy, um, there anyway, were there were a number of these guys that were just starting to think about things Bruce that Barton was a really good other one. people never thought about. It was like success secrets, they would call them and whatever. But he had, uh, these in people in that he included were Darwin and Einstein and Aristotle and Confucius and Socrates and such. He'd read their material and then he would imagine what they would be thinking. 
he'd have a conversation with them yeah. about what he was thinking about. And just when you, you know, know somebody's with, character. And he started out with nine people yeah. and he ended up with fifty on his council. Right. Fifty. And and he just he read and he thought, okay, we're gonna examine this and to get the perspective of the light, yeah. Of of all these folks. Because and, when you study somebody long enough, you yeah. get to where you understand the way they think. And and he received amazing inspiration, knowledge and, and ideas, which he credited for his successful life. Yeah, and I did and, and that. Subsequently, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I would do that with a Bible. I mean, when I would, I would teach, so I would study these characters like David or Joseph, and you get to where you feel like you know them because you've spent so much time with them. It's amazing. <coughs> he, uh, subsequent <laughs> to all this, he actually formed a mm -hmm. mastermind alliance right. with real people in business. That was like his inner circle that he talked to. But he started with this imaginary council. Interesting. If you never read his book, you ought to read it. You can download it for free mm -hmm. off the internet. It's huge. Seventh, know your list may change over the time. Mm -hmm. It's important for you to surround yourself with eagles who want to soar. Life right. is too short to waste your time hanging around with the wrong people when the right people are available to you. And please hear this next statement I'm going to make. Some friends are only in your life for a season. For a season. And sometimes you're moving on, but they're not. And so you just know that, that uh, you know, and, and let me say, you can actually outgo a relationship. You really can. Because people just, they're not interested in moving with the things of God. And if you're not moving in the things of God, you're actually backsliding. You're backing up. Mm -hmm. so. It's a fly. I know. I know. <laughs> so. If you see us doing like this, it's not that we're having, you know. You know we're we're having a hallelujah minute, yeah. moment. That's really yeah. what it's all about. Anyway. Yeah. But true friends understand. They do. And they grow with you. And if they don't, then they. Not really true friends. Yeah. And, and you know, sometimes you just keep on keeping on. Four. Those who love talking about and obeying the Word of God. Amen. First, do your friends read the Bible on a daily basis? There you go. Brother Harold, how would I know that? You'll know by how they act and react. Uh, you'll also know by the second point. When you meet that friend on the street, what's the first thing they talk about? If you have a 15-minute conversation, how much of that conversation spent discussing things of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Third, do they criticize and complain about their spouse, their parents, their children, their boss, or their job? Uh, if they, if so, they may know, they may know the word, but they're not practicing the word. There you go. They may not be doing that. Fourth, are they in church each time the doors open? Are they in Bible studies? Or, or, are they doing things to increase, you know? their effectiveness for the kingdom of God. And another thing you could almost ask was, sometimes people can, they go to church. They go to church on Sunday, they go to church on Wednesday night, but are they in the things of God during the day, every day? Not just, you know, an hour on Sunday and an hour on Wednesday night. Are they in the word and are they wanting and desiring to grow? Yeah. So. Going to church didn't make you a Christian any more than going to McDonald's makes you a Big Mac. So. Do they sell Big Macs anymore? Yeah, they do. Okay, just they curious. Do. Okay. We don't need them. Fifth, do they spend as much time reading and studying the Word and anointed books hmm. as do watching television or surfing the net? There you do. I could go on, we could go on, but I think you get the essence of this point. Birds of a feather flock together. That's right. You just make need to make sure that you're flocking to the right group of there people. There you go. Successful people are drawn to other successful people. Find friends who are out to make something of their lives. Yes. Or to be able to be a blessing. And let me just stop here and say, when I say being successful, I, I, I'm not talking about being head of a ministry or a major corporation or anything else. You know, you can be successful as, as a parent. 
classroom. Right. In what you're instructing in your children. Well, you know, that's how do you measure the success of children that you're you're creating a legacy mm -hmm. by by their um, love of God yeah. and obedience to do the things of God. Amen. You know, sometimes we think the only way we when we think about success, we think about you know being on a podium somewhere right. speaking, not on it but behind it, or. And, uh, just other things. I yeah. mean, you know, there's yeah. ways to be successful and then there's ways to really be a success. Bottom line, find friends who want to make something out of their lives. Right. And the truth of the matter is, you know, I, I'd rather have one friend that's got his head on straight, knows where he's going, than have 20 mediocre friends. Mm -hmm. Because that one will be able to bless me. Yeah. And see. And you bless them. And you bless them. And see, it's here's the problem. Two -way. A lot of times we're able to bless other <laughs> folks. But if we don't have people around us, then we're always pouring out and not getting back. And we need to... It's a two-way street. It's a two-way street. So, you're, you know, you have a relationship with somebody is always a two-way street. Proverbs 27, 17 in the Classic Amplified, this, this is it. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens and influences another through discussion. So, you know, be able to carry on a conversation with somebody and it you know you're going somewhere. In other words, you're, you, they'll tell you the truth and they go back and forth and come to the right answer. Anyway. Emily, your friends should be sharpening you. That's right. And you and should make, be sharpening their, your friends. And making each other better. That's right. Number five, those willing to do what's necessary All right. to be a winner in life. First, decide to be a winner. Amen. There's a, the primary difference between a winner and a loser is the decision to be a winner. If you decide it, you'll be it. Um, you, you're the only one who can effectively make that decision about your life. Mm -hmm. You can soar or the others sink. It's your choice. And, and see if you're watching this tonight around the world, you read mm -hmm. the email about this teaching on Wednesday, Rich Salt's email, you're going to make a life-changing decision. You're going to decide to leave things the way they are, or Forward. you're going to begin taking the necessary steps to advance the kingdom of God and be the winner that he wants you to be, That's one right. or the other. Second, there's no spiritual shortcuts. Ephesians 3 verse 20 is one of our favorite scriptures in the Amplified Classic, Amplified Bible, says this, now to him who by and in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us. I love it. Now this is allowing him to work that power that is at work within us. He is able. This is, this is em us emptying and him coming in and doing it through us. He, meaning God, is able to carry out his purpose <clears throat> and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Now that is us trusting the Word, standing on the Word, putting the Word to work, and not just kind of reading it going, I don't exactly, you know, know how this is going. It's, it's saying, Lord, I'm taking you at your Word, working these things out in me, so that I realize, you know, I can... I can experience, you know, the Word working through us. And when He does that, He'll show us and allow us to do things that we never realized or dared. And my husband calls it being stepping outside your comfort zone sometimes. But it's not a shortcut. Um, Zig Ziglar used to say, there are too many people waiting at the elevator. The problem is that the rise to success is one step at a time. So you take the steps, one step at a time. Anyway, so taking a spiritual sport, shortcut just doesn't work. And there's a reason why we are waiting. It's called preparation. God is preparing us through the Holy Spirit, one step at a time, showing us the things to do next. Psalm 27, verse 14, also in the classic Amplified Bible says, Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage and let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes, Sometimes this is the hardest part. Yes, wait for and hope for and expect the Lord. Sometimes when you're in a job and things are not going so well, 
it's difficult to wait on the Lord to see what he will do, but we have to just persevere and wait on the Lord. Third, be transformed. Yes. To be a winner, you got to repent. Hmm. You got to repent. Matthew 3, 2, in the classic Amplified, gives great advice. And saying, repent. Think, di underline this. After repent, underline. I get, in fact, I did it. Never mind, it's already done. You can underline it again. Repent, which means think differently. Try it. Change your mind, regretting your sins, and changing your conduct. Mm -hmm. For the kingdom of God it's is at hand. hand. In order to think creatively, it's imperative that we do the four things mentioned in this verse. First, think differently. Second, change your mind. Third, regret your sins. And fourth, change your conduct. Be mentally and spiritually prepared mm. to open your heart to receive what God is sending your way. Amen. Fourth, stand on God's Word. You know, as a winner, we're going to have to hold on to the Word of God. We're going to have to believe and, and not listen to some of the things that people say, some of the things that people say to do or, you know, not to do or what we might imagine to be true because we think that we've seen something one way or another. We have to hold on to what the actual Word of God says. In 1 Samuel verse 17, the Bible says, Goliath stood and shouted. This is in verse 8. It says the Philistine Goliath said, you know, and then Israel heard these words. Now they're hearing what somebody else is saying. And Goliath, what Goliath was saying, Goliath spoke the words, the same words, and David heard these words. But there was a difference. The battle's raging even before David took the smooth stone out of his pouch because it was a battle of words. It was whose words are really telling the truth. It was Goliath's words versus God's word through David. And with boldness, David was able to stand because he knew that he was, he had God behind him. He was, he knew the covenant. He knew, you know, he didn't waver or flinch. I mean, he knew that God would deliver him because he was standing for the Most High God and that Goliath could not win, no matter how big it looked. You know, I just did this, sent this quote out, I think, recently on our, our email that the giant in front of you is never bigger than the God inside of you. So, you know, his promise, his provision, his word of direction, the difference between being a winner in life and a loser is the Word of God. Zowie and That's hallelujah. Good. That's good. Number six, those who choose to blossom where they're planted. Mm. <laughs> Here are seven keys. First, appreciate where you are at the moment. Second, spend quality time with your family. Amen. Third, keep track of your goals. Fourth, Amen. Keep your life in balance. That's good. Fifth, accept what you cannot change at the moment and work on the things you can do something about. Six, get involved in your local church and or community. Seventh, maintain your outlook with a steady diet from mm. the Word of God. Amen. 1 Corinthians 8 verses 23 and 24 in the Living Bible says, you have been bought and paid for by Christ, so you belong to Him. Be free now from all these earthly prides and fears. So, dear brothers, whatever situation a person is in when he becomes a Christian, let him stay there. For now, the Lord is there to help him. The Lord will bring you out. That's right. <clears throat> Seventh, mm. those who know, those who know, those who know whatsoever He doeth shall prosper yeah. when God's in it. That's right. If we care, carefully obey and follow God's ways, whatever we do will prosper. It doesn't matter what circumstances are at the moment. We will prosper. Um, if you read uh, Genesis 39, verses 2, 3, and 23. I didn't put them here. This can be your homework to go look it up. But Joseph at that point, and I know you love this, yes, I do. was considered a prosperous man <clears throat> even though he was a slave. Yeah. He was on an auction block. 
And, and the scripture says they got and looked around all those people there at this auction of slaves, right, you know, um, you know, business people and farmers and you know I mean, everybody. They were the ones with the money. People quote. with the money. Mm -hmm. And he looked around through all of those, and the one person he said was prosperous, was successful, was Joseph. I, I think that you know we were talking earlier about how you get to know these characters when you study them and you're you know getting ready to teach and you're doing all this research on them. And I remember running into that. I mean, you know, I've read through the Bible a number of times, but sometimes something will just kind of jump out at you that you didn't see in the way that you saw before. And I remember starting that chapter in 39, where it said, you know, here you got Joseph on the auction block. Potiphar buys him, takes him into his house, and it says, and Joseph was a very prosperous man. And you go, because it doesn't, your situation can look dire. It can look dreadful. It can look like there's no way of you ever being able to get out of it. And yet, God's sitting there right there as you're reading the word and giving you a word of encouragement because it says he was with Joseph, therefore he was prosperous. And the reason being, and we know it when we read the story of Joseph, he was prosperous because he was looking to God for everything he did. When we all are, based on the word. When we're obedient to his word. That's right. We will experience biblical success. That's right. Regardless of what your current situation may be. What you're going you, through. Or what your, you feel you have or don't have. Or what you've heard, or what you see, or the way it seems. Wow, that's just something to hang on to. And there are people out there who really need to we all do hang on to those words of like knowing. You. I like Job 8-7 yeah, in the New Century good. Version. Mm. It says, where you began will seem unimportant. There's good. Because your future will be so successful. Amen. <laughs> that is a strong Boom. scripture. That's up. As, as my friend Clay would say, bam. That's it. That's a good I hit it on the head. That's it. Amen. Where, you know, if I were you, I'd take, and in fact, where Norman began there you go. will seem unimportant because his future will be so successful. Amen. Where Fred began Amen. will seem unimportant because his future will be so successful. Wow. That's good. Good. Joseph was prosperous. That's right. He was a successful man even when he was standing on that slave block. That's right. Genesis 39 verse 2 in the New Century version says it this way. The Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man. He lived in the house of his master, Potiphar the Egyptian. Now let me just tell you, at the moment right now, you can be up to your eyeballs in debt, mm. working a dead end job, so broke you can't rub two pennies together, but that's not where you're going to stay. That's right. When you follow, follow. God's principles yes. of biblical success. That's right. Now, where are you going to stay? Genesis 39, verse 3 in the New Century Version says, Potiphar saw that the Lord was with Joseph and that the Lord made Joseph successful in everything he did. Your, the cream rises to the top. And that was Joseph because he was doing the biblical principles of the Lord. Everywhere Joseph went, That's right. people were blessed and he was successful regardless of his circumstances. Amen. Genesis 39, verse 23, also in the New Century, says the warden paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and made him successful in everything he did. It takes a never give up kind of faith. That's right. A determination that no matter what's going on around us, yeah. or may even be happening to us or to those we love, we're going to hold on to, thus saith the Word of God. Because if God said it, mm -hmm. it's going to happen. It's not a question of if, but when. That's right. It's going to happen. It's going to manifest in our lives. But it takes that never kind of Give given, up. giving up faith. That's right. Which brings us to a scripture that we like. I like it, and I have claimed this more than once, believe me. Psalm 75, verses 6 and 7. This is in the classic Amplified. 
For not from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south come promotion and lifting up. But God is the judge. He puts down one and lifts up another. It's in his hands. Wow. God keeps the books. Amen. Your supervisor may not notice what you did. Your spouse or family may not notice. But God notice. He notices a righteous man or woman. That's right. He, he judges the intent of their heart, and he's a rewarder. As it says in, I think, Hebrews 11, 6, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. So it's not where we're at. That's right. It's where we're going. Now, I didn't put it on the outline. I want you to write this down. Those of you watching by you know, internet around the world, you can take and copy this and put it in a Word document and do it yep. and make a note That's it. right now, whatever you need to do, but write this down. It's not where I'm at today, but it's where I'm going and who's going with me. You added that little in. I did. It's not where I'm at today. It's where, it's I'm, where going. I'm going Amen. and who's going with me. Mm. Personalize it, make it yours, and uh, hallelujah and praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's good. I want to tell you it's worth your time tonight to have watched this program. Mm. If you got nothing else out of it, but Job eight seven, in the New Century Version. It is good. When joy began, it will seem unimportant because our future yes. will be so successful. Amen. <coughs> That is good. And that's the truth. So you know what? It's like we preach every single Sunday night. It's really the same thing over. It is called the Word. It's called standing on the Word. It's called living the Word and letting the Lord live through us. You know, and not being swayed, changed, or moved by circumstances that come into our lives, but by thus saith the Word of God. Amen. Not by might nor by you know, power, but by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Thus saith exactly. the Word of God. Amen. If well, you God enjoy, will bless and what He won't. That's right. And that's what we talked about tonight. Take Him out. Then bless both feet and move to the top. Where it says, so see, just double click. Mm -mm. Ask God what seed He'd have you so do what He says. That's, that's all, all we ever, ever ask. ask. <clears throat> Let me tell you then, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Last week we mailed you a letter. Yes, be on the lookout. Be on the lookout for it. On the outside it says, Seven Directions from the Lord. Make sure you read this letter. Mm -hmm. It'll bless you, set you free. It's awesome. Because in it we talk about That's right. how your enemies are defeated. And you'll want to read this letter. Amen. And make sure you plan to join us tomorrow morning. Yes. 8.30 Eastern. I want to keep on that successful part, you know, of Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. And in the meantime, till then, that's right. God keep, bless you and keep, happy trails. And keep thinking those rich thoughts. We like that. And we love you. Vote. Yes. Vote. Your conscience and the Word of God. Right. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. Just vote the Word of God. All right. Bye. See you next time.